In any city, in any country. Go to any schoolhouse you can get yourself into. Go to the principal and ask to see the holder of angst. If they hesitate for even a second, you're in the right place. If they refuse to acknowledge your question, ask them again. Eventually, they will grudgingly give in. They will take you to the basement of the school. As you are descending the steps, a feeling of uncertainty will wash over you. No matter how you try, the feeling will remain in the back of your mind, growing stronger with every step. The principal will lead you to the farthest corner of the basement. The closer you get to the corner, the more light is sapped out of your surroundings. With the light goes all feeling of hope. They will frantically start brushing the cobwebs and dust off the walls that connect at the corner. Once they complete this, both walls will have a brick with an indent just big enough to fit your hand into. The principal will leave without a word, and it will be clear to you that you are on your own from this point onward. You will have to decide between the two walls. Be careful though, as one contains horrors beyond the human imagination, while the other leads you forward. Either way leads to regret. If you manage to pick the door that leads onwards, you will see a dark, musty corridor. It will be darker than anything you may have thought possible. But walk in as straight a line as you can. If you collide with something warm and vaguely human, stop moving. Do not move or else you should regret your very existence. If you remain still, the warm blooded mass should vanish as if in mist. Once this happens, speed up your pace. You will eventually think that you see a light, but it is simply a trick. Do not go towards the light, for if you do, your very essence shall be in peril. At the end of this tunnel, you will feel what seems to be a door. It will be reminiscent of a medieval dungeon, with a small barred window and a wooden plank keeping the door from opening. Once you've made it this far, there is no turning back. You cannot do anything other then unbar the door and walk inside. Once you pull the door shut behind you, there will be a deep voice in your ears, speaking a language you will not understand. It will sound as if it's everywhere and nowhere, and its incomprehensible words shall chill you to your bones. Do not move, do not speak. Wait until the voice is done, until you so much as breathe. If you do not follow these instructions, your last sounds shall be tormented screaming. When the voice finishes, wait a moment. Turn slowly and face the holder of angst. He will be wearing torn strips of cloth and his body will be scarred. He will look at you with eyes so full of grief and sorrow you may almost cry yourself. Do not. He will start speaking about his life, but his voice will be but a whisper. He will describe torments too horrific to understand. Terrors that will make your ears bleed, but listen. Listen and do not close your eyes or cover your ears, for you won't need them if you do. During his story, he will cling to your shirt and ask you to help him escape his personal hell. Stay silent, as this is but a ruse. Once he is finished, he will curl into a fetal position and sob quietly. You have only a small amount of time until his crying drives you mad. Ask him. What will happen if they are brought together? The holder will be standing, even though he was just in a ball on the floor. His face will contort with an odd mix of rage and fear. He will run around, throwing unseen objects around the small, empty room. You will hear porcelain, glass, even wood break and shatter around you, even though there's nothing there. He will be ranting loudly in a language that was not meant for human ears. Again, wait. Stay still and silent until his fury is released. The moment he is done, he will sit down. He will begin to explain the reasons why they should never have been created, the atrocities that they have caused and the unimaginable power they contain. 
He will stop on occasion, to sob or throw another imaginary yet real object, but he will not be done. No, his madness has been driven too far, too deep to be done in a matter of minutes. He will speak for what seems like hours, and then days. Those days will turn into months, and then into decades and into millennia. You must not falter, no matter how long it seems you have been standing there. Once what seems like an eternity has passed, he will stand slowly and walk to you. He will lightly touch the sides of your head with his palms, and knowledge will flow through your very being. The holder will look at you with a look of blissful relief as his madness has finally left him. The moment you blink, he will be gone. The knowledge he has given you is object 501 of 538, and it must never be reunited with the others, for reasons which you will now fully understand. This understanding will eventually drive you to insanity. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of sanity. The receptionist will look at you strangely, but you must repeat the same question and nothing else. Eventually, she'll call for a doctor and you'll be taken to the room in the furthest corner of the institution. Beware. But after this point, there is no turning back, and if you wish to leave then, tell the doctor that you are sorry, and you must not have taken your medication today, and leave. Run as far away as you can, outside the city limits, outside of the country limits, for cowards are not spared if caught. If you continue on, you will be put into a straitjacket and locked in a padded room. After a few days that will seem like months, you will start to hear voices, hundreds of them, all talking about how their lives were ruined. Their stories may drive you mad, and you would have to stay there for all eternity, for in your padded room there is no death, only torture. If the voices stop talking, close your eyes tight and shout at the top of your lungs, I will not share your stories. If the voices do not resume, Pray that the pain you will next feel will not be so bad, however unlikely that is. As the voices continue talking, single out the voice that speaks of the very hospital you are in. Listen to his story, and open your eyes. You will not be in the cell anymore, but still in a straitjacket. Instead, you will be in what seems like an endless void. The only thing separating you from the void? A glass box. A man will appear in front of you and ask if you have any questions. He will respond to one and only one question. Ask what drove them to insanity. He will explain in horrifying detail about the lives and deaths of them. During his response, a large black dot will appear to be moving through the void, but you must not focus your sight on it, for it will shatter the glass box, leaving you to fall into the void for all eternity. Once the man has finished his story, he will remove your straitjacket and bid you farewell. You will find yourself standing outside the institution, holding the straitjacket. The jacket is object 72 of 538. You can only pray that you may never wear it again. In any city, in any country, seek out any school or educational facility you can find. When you reach the front desk, ask to see the person who calls himself the holder of chance. If the secretary shows any signs of fear, give the request again and do not relent. Eventually, your perseverance will pay off and you will be led to a deserted classroom in a closed down wing of the school. Scraps of police tape and faded chalk profiles will litter the floor and the door will be sealed behind you before you can inquire anything. 
At this point, you must choose one of the 30 desks. Sit down and wait. Only one of these desks will allow you to keep your life. Advising you to choose wisely would be little good, as there's no way to tell if you have done so until it's too late. After a short wait, you should begin to hear things. Children laughing, droning lectures and the occasional snore. But these are merely echoes of a time when the classroom was host to nothing more devious than homework and pop quizzes. As you wait, the sounds will slowly change. Where there was once laughter and lectures, there will now be screams of agony and howls of despair. Shades of the classroom's horrible history will begin to take shape around you. Do not fear the shapes, as they are harmless. The beast they can coalesce into, however, is not. As your wait continues, the shadows will grow more numerous and the classroom's history will unfold in increasingly gruesome detail. This part has driven many men into fits of tears and more still into madness. Should you reach the end of this macabre production with your sanity intact, you will find out if you have chosen wisely. If you have chosen incorrectly, the shapes will take form. They are hideous mockeries of what they were in life, half-formed doppelgangers of those long dead. There is no escape from this room now. They will tear you apart ever so slowly, taking twisted delight in inflicting the pain they have suffered on someone else. It will take you days, perhaps even weeks to die. The only consolation you will have is that you will likely lose your sanity after the first few hours. If you were lucky and chose the one correct desk, the shapes will gather around you, coalescing into a pitch black mass. When it disappears, you will find yourself in the most lavish casino imaginable. It is populated by those who have played the game so long that their flesh has long since rotted away, for death is forbidden from entering this casino, and yet still play, hoping to gain their freedom. The casino has but two exits. One leads to a wasteland where fell beasts roam and nothing but certain death awaits. The cost to pass through this is four silver coins. The other door will take you to what you seek, and it's the only chance for you to leave with your life. The cost to pass through is five gold coins. You will be holding a single silver coin in your hand. Don't fret. As long as you are in this casino, you can never have any less than this one coin. A nearby sign will tell you that three silvers equal one gold. You must play if you do not wish to be trapped here for good. But remember the old casino boss's idiom. You can't beat the house. Nearly every game is rigged in favour of the house, and the precious few which aren't change at random, serving only to trick and confuse you. The odds are most definitely not in your favour. If you do begin to win, take care to keep your fortune as secret as possible, as the damned around you have not been so lucky. Bear in mind that you cannot die in this place and that boastfulness may inspire them to turn on you in a fit of jealous hatred, ripping great chunks of flesh out of your body until their jealousy is quenched and their bloodlust sated. If, against all odds, you manage to gather the five gold coins to enter the door unmolested by the other gamblers, you will find yourself in an elevator. It will take you up to an office even more opulent than the casino below. Behind the desk at the far end of the room will sit a skeletal figure, dressed in the finest suit you will ever see. Approach the desk and stand before it, asking only one question. Will you roll? It will nod and produce a pair of dice from its jacket. Call the roll, evens or odds. If you lose, the skeleton will grin and you will take its place waiting thousands of years for the next seeker to be so lucky as to reach your new abode. If you should win, however, 
It will let loose a whale that will unbind the magics that hold the place together. Death will finally enter the casino below, granting the wretched gamblers the rest that has for so long been denied them. As the casino disintegrates around you, stand perfectly still. Hopefully, you will not be taken with it. But if you are, there is no being in this world who can say what will happen to you. If you are not taken, you will reappear in the classroom. It will be exactly the same as you left it, save a mound of dust and rotting cloth at your feet. Within it, you will find a pair of dice. As soon as you touch them, the door will unlock. That pair of dice is object 75 of 538. With every roll, they take another life. Will yours be the next they claim? In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to view something known as the holder of the voice. The worker may try to hide a brief look of panic, but will eventually compose himself. He will throw you a small, black, unmarked plastic bag and walk away irrationally. You do not have to follow him, but something will bid you to trace his footsteps. You will pass through a dimly lit hallway with panoramic windows for walls. Regardless of the time of day, the outdoors will appear to be dark. Should you look out the windows, you will see only an endless stretch of woods. If you think you see motion in the woods, do not turn. Keep walking up towards the end of the hall. There will be no door, only a blank wall with peeling wallpaper. The worker will tear the wallpaper off just a bit, then flee into the shadows. When you inevitably finish tearing the wallpaper, a small, dusty attic room will be revealed. In the centre sit two objects, a small doll and a tape recorder. Both are ancient and coated in dust. If you examine the doll, you will see a small metal crank on it. Wind the crank and the doll will emit a sound somewhat akin to fingernails scratching against wood. Press play on the tape recorder. It will play even if there are no batteries. There will be the muffled sound of a female voice in distress. You will not be able to make out the words. It will go on and on until you press stop. The final decision facing you will be whether or not you should play the two sounds together. The bag given to you will contain two rusted railroad spikes. You know what you will do. The moment you attempt to start both sounds at the same time, the ground will begin to shake and the room around you will begin to crackle and start coming apart. If you were to survive the collapse of the building, you will be haunted by a sound so shrill and grating that should you remain listening to it for even a small amount of time, you shall bleed from the ears until death. Even before that, you feel strongly compelled to impale both of your eardrums with the railroad spikes. Your only hope is to, through the evil sounds piercing the air, nail the doll and tape recorder to the floor where you stand. Should you succeed within the broken tape recorder, you will find a tape. It is unplayable and emanates a buzzing hum if you listen closely. That object is 105 of 538. When the time comes, all held within shall be revealed. In any city, in any country, Go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Youth. The attendant will choke back a childish giggle and rise from her seat, motioning for you to follow. Do so, but do not show any emotion other than annoyance. 
for there are creatures watching you, waiting for a chance to erase your mind and make you do their foul bidding. The attendant will lead you through the facility, skipping merrily along and turning down hallways at a whim. Do not bother trying to remember the path, for it will soon be irrelevant. After what will feel like hours of walking, she will turn into an empty room and halt abruptly, announcing that you have arrived. Follow her in and shut the door firmly, then move aside. She will wait, rocking gingerly on her heels, then bounce towards the door, opening it with little more than a grin. Through the door, there will be a lush meadow, teeming with vibrancy and life. Follow your guide through the frame and stop when she does. She will then glance around nervously and lean towards you with apprehension in her eyes. She will speak a single, whimsical word, then depart, leaving through the door and closing it. You must make sure to not forget that word. Walk forward with rigid, stoic paces, keeping an angry visage upon your features. The guardians here know you do not belong, but will be too afraid to strike. For now. Continue walking until you reach a ring of flowers and step inside it. They will all wilt suddenly, with the exception of one small portion. Go in that direction and that direction only, for 44 paces. Then stop, turn to your right, and walk another 44 paces. When you stop for a second time, turn completely around. You should be in a dense, verdant forest. If you are not, then the guardians have mustered their courage, and no power in this place will try to save you. When you arrive, Immediately take three steps backward. You should come to rest against a large tree. Vines and branches will snake over your body and hold you there, but do not struggle. No matter how tightly they constrict, you must not show your pain, but keep glaring forward, lest the tree decide to crush you on itself. When the growth stops, several children will burst from the bushes, laughing and playing oblivious to your presence, and form a ring around the tree. As they begin to dance around it, they will sing in pleasant voices, a silly children's song, making the trees around them shudder with laughter. Whatever you do, do not speak or soften your face, but wait until the children pause and sit to catch their breath. One of them will finally notice you and ask what you are doing there. Tell them that you wish to see father, and they will gasp as one. Should they begin to giggle, then your death will arrive soon, by creatures which no words could ever describe. Sternly tell them again that you wish to speak with father, and their leader will hang his head glumly, muttering acquaintances to you. He will stand and walk away, leaving all the others around you. They will begin to speak, to themselves and you, but you must not look at them, listen to them, or even think about anything they might say to you. They only seek to break your stoic mask and flee their punishment. If their words should ever cease, then growl at them, stop pouting about it and enjoy yourselves. You must sound as menacing as possible, and they will resume talking. No one knows what happens if they remain silent. When the other child finally arrives, he will sit back down and a tall, wizened figure will emerge from the thicket. He will stare at you, a gaunt, annoyed face that should match your own, and demand to know why you came here of all places. Glare at him and ask, does it truly matter? The figure will sigh darkly and begin a long-winded rant about the follies of youth. Stay silent or he will not take kindly to interruptions. When he finally winds down, he will ask again why you are here. Ask him, what were they before this? The old man's eyes will flash with understanding, and he will sit on a nearby stone and begin to speak. He will tell you in every possible detail what they were in a time before time, 
when there was still a shred of goodness within what they kept. He will explain, with a heavy voice, the karma times, and tell you of the events that sparked their fall. Every slight, every delusion, every crushed dream will be laid bare by his words. As the old man speaks, the lush green around you will give way to blackened, dead soil, rotting trees, and foul, half-rotting vegetation. Do not change your expression, and hold your gaze on the old man. The story will end with, see what they have done to my children. The small figures that sat around you will now be festering corpses, all eyeing you with gleams of sadness in their putrescent faces, begging for release. They will all stand and trot toward you, with their father telling you that their hunger must be sated. Now, in your loudest voice, scream the word you were told when you arrived. Should you have forgotten or mispronounced it in any way, then you will spend the rest of eternity as the dead children's meal. Speak it correctly, and they should all fall to the ground, clutching their ears shut, and the constricting briars from the tree will shatter. Take the largest piece of wood that you can find, run toward the old man, and stab him in the neck with it. As he chokes on his own blood, he will hold a single rose aloft. Take it from his hand, as darkness will surround you, forcing you to choke and die like him. When your lungs feel as though they shall burst, you will find yourself at the door to the place you call home gasping for air and clutching the flower in your clammy hand. That rose is object 87 of 538, Forlorn Remembrance. It stands for the purity that once was and never shall be again. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask the receptionist if you can see the one who calls herself the holder of pain. The receptionist will say that he has no idea who you speak of, but will slide a card across the desk to you with a room number on it. Take the card while replying apologetically. I must be in the wrong place then. And ascend the stairs that may or may not have been there before. As you wander the upcoming halls in search of her room, you will hear the most beautiful singing you have ever heard. Should the singing ever stop, whisper, please continue, it's beautiful. However, the return of the singing is the last thing you want. If it does, you may calmly leave the building and tell your loved ones goodbye. You will be dead by morning. Should the silence persist, continue to the room shown on the card. Quietly enter it. An average looking blonde haired woman wearing glasses will be sitting in the centre of the bare room with her back turned to you. A pool of blood will have collected at her feet. Approach her and embrace her. Mind yourself though, the closer you get to her, the more pain and despair you will feel wash over you. You must continue in spite of this, lest you weep yourself to death. Hold on to her until she begins to cry, and ask her, where does their pain come from? She will smile weakly and respond, their love. She will then hold out her hand, and you will notice a ring on her finger. Delicately take the ring from her finger, kiss the back of her hand, and leave. The ring is object 212, 538. Only you will see that the most painful thing in the world can be love. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask with no hesitation to visit someone who calls himself the holder of darkness. The worker will mock you, but you have to stay as calm as possible. Keep asking him until he stops denying and withdraws from his counter to guide you through the corridors. As his behaviour changes radically, 
stay on guard, for if you start hearing one single tiny sinister hiss, you should turn around and flee as far as you can, covering your ears, because the time was bad. If you do not escape in time, the faint sound will turn into a dreadful growling that will soon merge into a continuous shriek of sheer pain until madness floods you and leaves you to die in deafening agony. If the warden remains silent, he will lead you to a closed door with neither handles nor lock. As he pushes it open effortlessly, you will see an ascending, winding staircase, which can't possibly lead to any upper floor of the establishment. The door will close behind you, and you will not be able to push it back. Past this point, climb and do not turn back, or you will fall into a bottomless pit waiting for living prey to chew upon. Do not count the steps, for knowing how many there are will drive you to insanity. One will then creak, and at that point you should stop. Another door should appear on your left. If it is on your right, then pray for a swift passing. Enter slowly into the room, and a blinding, obscuring darkness shall descend upon you. You will be required to walk straight forward, for straying even slightly will lead you to be devoured by the roaming and unknown creatures observing you with blinded and purulent eyes. You will know you have arrived when coldness grips you. At that very moment, freeze, or you will die by the hands of the holder who is standing right in front of you. In complete darkness, even closing your eyes will not prevent you from his horrid appearance. It will form into your mind as the most outrageous monster ever conceived, and madness will try to creep into your brain as worms over a decayed corpse. His fulminating breath and constant mumbling would be enough to make you cry, but be advised not to utter anything louder than a weeping, or you might wake what must not be awakened. The only question you will be able to whisper without being torn apart will be, what do they fear? You will feel movements all around you as shudders animate your opponents. You will hear what nameless and incurable diseases will strike the world if they were to be frightened. The countless terrors their own fright will unleash on those with a weaker mind than theirs. Amidst the atrocious enumeration of the endless sores the world will suffer, you might hear the simplest, almost ridiculous, yet implicable and certain truth they all fear. Do not move again. When your head is about to implode, it will stop. If you are still able to move, you will find a door in front of you, which leads you outside of the ward. There, in the open, in the grass, a broken hourglass will wait for you. You are free to pick it up. It is object 13 of 538. Your knowledge of their fears is up to you to share, but you may not want to use it as a weapon against them. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask the worker there if the holder of illusion is housed here. If the worker nods, you are doomed. The holder has anticipated your arrival, and you will feel your body slowly begin to fade out of existence. It is not a pleasant experience. If the worker answers no, be thankful. She will hand you a sheet of paper with directions on getting to the proper asylum and ask you to leave. Do so, turn left, and throw away the paper. You don't want to alert the holder to your coming before it is necessary. Walk four blocks down the road in the direction you're heading, then turn right and walk one, then left and walk two, then stop, scratch your chin and turn around. The street has changed, all the colour has drained from the world in front of you. A huge crater gapes from the centre of the street, not a pane of glass remains intact, and all the people you might have passed on that block lie horribly dead. Take a step back. There should be a red paint pen on the ground beside you. Grab it and stuff it into your pocket. 
As you watch, the discoloration effect slowly spreads, revealing what looks like the aftermath of a military attack on a black and white world. Smashed buildings, blasted streets, and dead people everywhere. Quickly cover your eyes with your hands and shout, I deny the truth, let the path remain. If the holder deems you unworthy, you will suffer the same fate as the block, and the effect you saw will continue to spread, wiping the illusion clean from our world. But if you pass, a slight tingle will shoot through your legs, just barely powerful enough to be felt. Open your eyes, the effect is still spreading, but you stand fully as you were in the middle of its ruin. Walk straight down the block until you come to a warehouse. The main doors, though bent and dinged, still stand strong. Next to the doors is a building nameplate, like the ones you see on firehouses and the like, but completely blank. Take out the paint pen and write on the plate, as small as you can, while still writing legibly. Who survived to tell of it? The ink will pull into a dot and then begin to drip, much like blood, down the plate. It will describe the survivor telling his tale of horror and sadness, and the ends to which he fell in an attempt to get the tale out, to try and ensure that it would not happen again. Slowly, you will get the horrible feeling that the holder himself was the survivor spoken of. He will assure you that this is not true, however, and end the tale with, his fate bears not for the telling, but his legacy lives on. The paint pen will melt in your hand, and the side door to the warehouse will crash open. Run inside, do not walk, and enter the manager's office. It will be completely dark, but dare you not light it up in any way, lest you awaken the guardian from his dreams. Instead, grope around on the desk until you feel an object, round and smooth, in your hands. The office will flash out of sight, and you will get a brief glimpse of the massacred street in full colour, before everything goes black. You will wake up two days later sitting at the kitchen table in your home. A newspaper nearby screams of a terrorist attack. Sit up, and you'll realise that you still hold the object. Set it on the table. The object you see before you is a steel ball, about the size of a walnut, and is object 51 out of 538. The survivor now knows of you, and you of him. This jealous secret will bind for all time. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. Wait for an ambulance to arrive and unload its patient. As long as the patient is alive, no matter how mangled he may be, ask him to see the holder of health. Should the patient you're talking to die at any time during or after you've asked to see the holder, the object you're after is no longer there. Run for your insignificant life and do not stop until the sun rises the next morning. If the object you seek is still there, the patient will go into a massive seizure, and the medical staff accompanying him in the ambulance will try to save him. The patient will then gut out the medical staff using whatever is at hand at the time. During this time, you must not move from your current position, or the patient will come for you next. Once the patient is done with his victims, you may ask only one thing, lest you be mangled for eternity. What was the price for longevity? The patient will then tell a horrific story. Every malpractice, every accident, every excuse and every experiment in medical history to result in what people find today as convenience. He will then explain the true price of convenience, that sacrifice and convenience go together, as do day and night. That the greater the convenience one wants, the greater the sacrifice one must give. If your sanity is intact after this horrific story, you must react fast, as the patient will lose his patience and lunge towards you. Grab for the syringe that wasn't there before beside you and stab it into his head, or whatever is left of it should a head injury be his original need for an ambulance. 
He will soon die and you must extract a liquid that comes from his head. This syringe will never run out of the liquid inside it and it will not extract any other liquid. Inserting some of the liquid inside of you through the syringe will give you demonic strength for a certain time, depending on how much you put into yourself. Beware, however, since that liquid draws itself from the life force of the people you care about most. The syringe is object 122 of 538. You now know the price. It is up to you to decide whether you can afford it or not. In any city, in any country, go to any abandoned amusement park you can enter. Find the largest roller coaster in the park no matter its condition. Take a seat on the far left of the first cart, then close your eyes and whisper, I wish to see the holder of catastrophe. You will feel the coaster start to move, but do not open your eyes, or you will find yourself moving through an endless void which you can never escape. The coaster will then slowly start to head up for what seems to be ages as you listen to the rumbling of the track. You will then hear voices whisper to you, asking you to save them. You must not respond to them in any way, or they will take you away to the same void to which they belong. The voices will stop speaking to you, and the cart will come to a stop. With your eyes still closed, you must grasp the bar in the cart as tightly as you possibly can, or you will be left behind forever. After you do so, you will feel yourself plummeting straight down at impossible speeds. The rushing wind will only compound the rapidly chilling air. The cart will continue on its path despite the frigid temperature that you will feel freezing you to your core. As you sense the cart around you disappear, you must keep hold of the bar as it is the only thing keeping you attached to reality. Abruptly, you will stop. Drop the bar and sit still with your eyes closed until you start to hear the sound of a carnival fanfare in the distance. Only then can you open your eyes. You will be greeted by a large pinstripe circus tent a few yards in front of you, surrounded by meadows and happy people, young and old. You must walk towards the tent, staring at the small entrance which is shrouded by darkness. As you continue walking, the scenery around you will start morphing. Slowly, the meadow will wither away, the carnival music will slow and bend in pitch until it hardly resembles a tune composed by man. The people will decay in the very spots they stand. They will scream in agony and ask you to help them, yet you cannot look directly at them or you will meet the same fate as these illusions. You must continue forward until you finally reach the dark entrance. Walk forward and allow yourself to be swallowed by the darkness. Do not stop or look back. As if you do either, you will never find an exit. Continue your walk into the void until you see a dim light in the distance and start to hear the sobbing of a man. Follow these two signs as you hear the crying of the man growing louder. You will discover that the light is coming from a doorway in the darkness. When you walk through the door, you will be greeted by a cold cement cell. In the far left corner, you will see the crying man dressed as a circus clown, covering his face with a small diary. You must slowly approach him as not to aggravate him until he is right by your feet. Sit down next to him and ask, what do we have to lose? The clown will then read you an excerpt from the diary through his sobs. The writings that are read to you will describe the demise of millions of innocents and the forces that so cruelly and coldly carried out this act. As he reads, illusions will appear around you and in the periphery of your vision, you will see every death of every person in the story many of which were slaughtered, 
many of which were taken by disease. However, you must keep looking at the clown, as if you lose sight of him, you will be stuck in this illusion and you will become part of the story yourself. After he is done, he will stop crying. He will lower the book from in front of his face, revealing that he has suffered the same decay as the illusions which you had seen before. He will hand the book to you, which you must accept. He warns that you cannot read the diary yourself or else you will be driven mad. He will then whisper, when the stakes are high, best to play the clown, as the rest of his body starts to decay. The room will fall away around you. You must close your eyes one more time, keeping hold of the book, and count to exactly 12 seconds before opening them. When you do, you will find yourself in the same seat of the roller coaster in which you began. This diary is object 12 of 538. These events must never be allowed to occur again. <laughs>